The following is a presentation of Learfield IMG College. Live from the Rutgers Club, this is the Rutgers Football Show. Your all-access pass to the Scarlet Knights is coming your way on the Rutgers Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Tonight's show is brought to you by... To be a part of the show, give us a call at 1-877-384-1869. That's 877-384-1869. Here's your host, Chris Carlin. And once again, welcome to the Rutgers Football Radio Show live from the Rutgers Club on the Livingston campus as the Scarlet Knights coming off their second win of the season And we will get into that in just a moment. We will also talk all about the matchup with Illinois this week. Our telephone number to get involved tonight, 877-384-1869. That's 877-384-1869. Chris Carlin with Eric Legrandi. How are you? Doing great, Chris. How are you? Outstanding. And, of course, the winner of his first collegiate game as a head coach is Nunzio Campanelli. Congratulations. Thank you very much. So what did you do to celebrate the other day? Uh, not a whole lot. I went to my son's game and uh, hung out with my brothers and watched uh, my brother's Michigan game. So I hate to admit that, but it's true. <laughs> I, I, I was in the locker room after that. <laughs> How was it in that locker room after that the other day? It was a lot of fun. It really it was great to see the kids celebrate. It was great to see them, you know, out there having fun and, and you know, just having the opportunity to relax a little bit and kind of get that monkey off their back and, and feel, you know, proud of themselves. Was there kind of a, a big sigh of relief so to speak considering everything that this season has brought I think so I, I think that you know they work so hard and you know, there's so much you know negative attention outside you know I mean not inside but I think there's so much negativity outside that sometimes it, it's natural to probably doubt yourself doubt the uh, the group the people around you and I think for them to be able to feel like hey we can celebrate together that we do have a bunch of really good players in this locker room, I think they felt really good about that, and I felt good to to just see them enjoy themselves. And what was the energy like coming back on Sunday now after a win and going over to film with the team? Now, honestly, it was great. You know, but we told them, you know, it, uh, we talk a lot about dealing with adversity, and now we got to talk about handling a little prosperity. We got to handle our business and make sure that we're out continuing to work as hard, if not harder, than we've been to get to this point. You know, we have a we've learned some. Great lessons along the way, and hopefully those things will help us in these next four games. So, you know, we pretty much talked a lot about, you know, the celebration's over. It's time to get back and get focused and go out and find a way to, you know, to win the next game. Once again, our telephone number, 877-384-1869. You can also tweet us your questions at Rutgers Radio for Coach Nunzio Campanelli. And if you are here in person at the Rutgers Club, you can come on up front. We'll get you on the microphone as well as we're on our vision, of course, on the Scarlet Knights app and on 1450 AM WCTC. Let's talk about some specifics of the game. Offensively, I thought perhaps the most impressive aspect of it, the length of the drives that you had in this game. Yes, you scored eight out of nine times, phenomenal, but you had drives that were, I think it was four in a row at least that started that were all 75 yards and just consistency offensively. Yeah, that, you know, you preach execution all the time, but we also talk about trying to make big plays because it's really hard to drive the football and it's hard, it's hard to drive the field. I mean, all the years uh, that I've coached from a defensive perspective, you're always talking about make them drive the field because they'll screw it up eventually. And, and for us to continue to execute, to convert third downs, I mean, I, third down has been like just an albatross for us for the last couple of years. So the last two weeks, I think we were about 59% uh, two weeks ago and then 71% this week. If we can continue to convert third downs in that, you know, 50 plus percent range, then you're really cooking with something, you know, and that comes with winning on first and second down. We stayed on schedule. Like all the things that we talked to them about every, pretty much every day uh, that didn't happen in the first three games happened uh, on Saturday. And I think it was great for them to see, yeah, well, if we do this, you know, now we have a chance. So it's kind of not beating yourself, not having the negative plays, not having the sacks, that kind of stuff. You know, and, and that uh, 
No, that just that staying on schedule was a big deal with converting because we weren't converting third and twelves. We were con- converting third and twos and third and fours. Well, we're going to talk about Johnny Langan a lot this show, I know. But there was one particular play that stuck out to me. It was on his Isaiah Washington touchdown. I believe that might have been a third down play as well. But it was. It was Isaiah, I mean, he dropped back Johnny Langan, and it looked like the linebacker jumped and he pump faked it, but was able to fit it in the second window between the corner and the safety. And Ray Lucas pointed it out right there. He could have easily thrown it. It could have been intercepted for a touchdown. But instead he waited. And then was that play designed for that? Did he know that or did he read that? That, the, that linebacker was going to jump that slant route? Uh, well, he read it. What we did was we, we motioned the back out late uh, on a swing, and the safety was down. He went wide, and then he threw it right between the corner of the safety and the Mike linebacker. Mm-hmm. But really, the, the biggest thing that he did was he got the ball out of his hand fast, mm-hmm. and a lot of that comes with confidence. It comes with playing. You, know, you play faster when you feel confident and you're sure of yourself. And he, he made a commitment last week to just saying, I'm going to drown out all the noise. I'm going to go out and just go out play, compete, execute, and he was a much, much better player when he played with confidence and he played with conviction, and you know, hopefully he can continue doing that going forward. Remarkable in that he became the first Rutgers quarterback to rush for over 100 yards in a game since 1961. Sam Moody was the last to do it uh, on that 61 legendary team, of course, but um, just the way he was able to do it, and, and, and I think probably we didn't pay enough attention to it or talk about it enough during the game, but your offensive line played exceptionally well to give him opportunities in that game. Oh, no doubt. I mean, the pass protection was great, but the run blocking was great. When we talk about staying on schedule, I mean, that's really what it is. The ball has to move forward all game. And I think we only had one or two negative plays in the whole game. We had a sack in the two-minute drive. Other than that, you know, they, we really executed very well. And, you know, that's what it really is. It's a team effort. I mean, especially when you're going to put that many plays together and that many long drives, it shows that, hey, we're, we're – coming together and a little bit more cohesive. And that's a big thing with the continuity on the offensive line and the tight ends, you know, that they feel comfortable doing what they're doing. And, you know, we just didn't have a lot of mental errors. And that's a thing that, you know, has kind of plagued us also. It's kind of led to some of that third down problem. So, you know, we didn't, we didn't beat ourselves and a lot of that. Cause those guys always play really hard. I know that. And, you know, but they really played very well on Saturday, which is, uh, you know, a compliment to them. As a play caller, how much does it open up the book your playbook when you have Johnny Lincoln who can run and convert those third and twos instead of lining up and they know that say Isaiah Pacheco you're going to hand it off to him it, was, it seemed like a lot of times he was doing those play action fakes and jet motion and across and then he was keeping it and converting on those third downs yeah well what it gives us is it gives us options in, in the run game where just like in the pass game there's multiple reads he's making reads on almost every play uh, whether it's a run pass option or you know or it's a run run option but either way I think that he made great decisions uh, and then once he made the decision obviously he's a tough dude I mean he you know he's not afraid to mix it up at all and he's a big you know strong physical guy so uh, it is a huge thing because otherwise you know if you watch teams that don't have that element anything past third and two becomes passes Mm -hmm. and you know you become really predictable so our ability to run the ball in third and medium also gives us the ability to run some play actions in third and medium, which most of the time you lose those if you're a traditional drop back team. So, you know, we're getting uh, the advantage of some of those things on third down that normally would only apply to first and second down. And as a result, he is uh, Johnny Langan, uh, over 300 yards total offense, three touchdowns, two passing, one rushing, and he became the Big Ten uh, freshman of the week. So that was outstanding to see for Mr. Langan. Let us get our first phone call in of the night. Jerry will start us off down in Miami, Florida, and he joins us on the Rutgers football radio show. Hello, Jerry. What's going on, buddy? Jerry, are you there? All right, we know he'll. Well, we got some. Uh, I think he's got a bad connection. He'll call back. We'll get him back up here uh, in just a couple. Hey. Oh, there oh, he is. There he is. Am I up there? You are on the worst cell phone. Hey, how ever. are you? How are you, Jerry? <laughs> um, no, nah, it's all good. Coach, uh, first and foremost, congrats on the win. Um, looking forward to building off that. I just had two points real quick, just if you can go over with me. Um, talk about Johnny Langan's footwork a little bit, and I know you mentioned last week how we how the game is starting to slow down for him, but I know his footwork was a lot better, and you can really tell what a quarterback thinks or how fast he's thinking based on his footwork or quote-unquote happy feet. So just kind of talk about his footwork and how the game slowed down for him a little bit. And also talk about um, Illinois' defense 
and some of our matchups that we're going to have. Uh, they show a lot of cover two, but their cover two seems to be a lot of nine man front. And sometimes you'll find that they they have about nine players that are going to be lined up in the box within five yards, and they're almost tempting to throw that skinny post. So just kind of talk about that a little bit. Well, the first thing uh, when you talk about his footwork, I think it all kind of relates together. I mean, first, you know, your eyes and your feet basically make your decisions. So, you know, if your body's aligned to the throws, you'll be a much you'll deliver the ball much quicker. And he basically played this week with a sense of confidence that he understood the schemes and he understood understood the reads and the progression. So the ball came out faster. And I think when you're not certain about what's happening, you're much quicker to start getting out of the pocket because you don't want to make a bad play. And usually what ends up happening is you make a bunch of bad plays. So I think that, you know, he, it definitely slowed down for him. And because of that, uh, he was much more sure in his footwork, much more sure in his decision-making. So I think, you know, those are totally accurate points. And so when it comes to uh, Illinois, you know, they're a mix between uh, – they do play a bunch of cover two. They play a bunch of, uh, like, NFL-style Tampa two. But they also play a, a good amount of man-to-man. And it, really what they do is they play really hard. They swarm to the ball. Uh, they do a great job of keeping their linebackers clean so they can make a lot of tackles. Uh, you know, their safeties, when they want to get them involved in the run game, are really good tacklers. So I, I think they're a really good defense, and they're getting better. You know, that's one thing that you watch them over the course of the season. And, you know, they struggled there in the middle. They started fast, and then they struggled for a couple of weeks. And, you know, they, they've really started to put it together the last two weeks. So, you know, hopefully it should be a great matchup. Hopefully, you know, we're doing the same thing. We're building and putting it together, and it should be a great game, hopefully, on, you know, Saturday afternoon. All right, we appreciate the call, Jerry. Once again, you can tweet us your questions at Rutgers Radio. Got to figure, uh, take our first time out of the night. A uh, couple of things that we want to make you aware of. Unfortunately, this is our final football radio show of the year. We've got the bye week next week. And then uh, we've also got some conflicts when it comes to basketball games that will be up against it. And, of course, uh, they air on the same uh, on 1450 WCTC. And two weeks from tonight... We will have a Rutgers wrestling preview show here at the Rutgers Club with Coach Scott Cadell, so we're looking forward to that. That is coming up on November the 12th. Also want to remind you that a week from uh, today, I believe it is, the, on November the 6th, it'll of course be the 150th anniversary of college football, and we've had the year-long celebration right here at the birthplace, so we will have huge events going on that day and want the public to show up and, and really get a chance to enjoy it. First of all, at 2 o'clock on November the 6th, uh, over at Old Queens, we will have the ringing of the bells at Old Queens, and then the birthplace of college football uh, sign unveiling that will take place over at the College Avenue gym where the original first game was played, and that will be at 3.30. And both are open to the public, so we very much encourage everybody to come out uh, on November the 6th, which is next Wednesday, if I'm correct, and uh, I'm not very good on the math and dates and stuff like that, uh, but uh, maybe it's next Tuesday. It's the Tuesday? It's it is Wednesday. Okay, I'm lost. Don't worry about it. Anyway, it is Wednesday, November the 6th, so make sure that you uh, come out and join us for the ringing of the bells at Old Queens at 2 o'clock, and then, of course, the unveiling of the birthplace of college football uh, at 3.30 over at the College Avenue gym. All right, we'll take a timeout. We've got some more news coming up on the women's soccer team, which is uh, having an outstanding year. We'll tell you about that in just a moment. Your calls for Coach Nunzio Campanelli. Rutgers getting set for Illinois this coming Saturday out in Champaign. From Learfield IMG College, this is the Rutgers Football Radio Show. Best tailgate? It's got to be burgers. And an ice cold Coke. Real football. Y pollo asado. Hoops and wings. It sucks. Nah, hot dog. No, Dodger dog. I'll drink to that. Pass me a Coke. It's got to be crawfish. Mac and cheese. No. Seven layer dip. Ribs. No contest. Hummus. Um, what? You need a hot grill. And an ice cold Coke. Of course. Football and Coke. Come on. It's got to be Coke. Game day? Race day. Calls for Coke. You know it. It's tailgate 101. Technology is the backbone of every business, but choosing the right technology requires time and resources most IT managers cannot spare. 
For 30 years, SHI International has helped businesses select, deploy, and manage IT solutions that meet their unique business goals. From end users to the cloud, SHI helps build and maintain some of the world's most complex IT environments. Find out how SHI can help your organization by visiting SHI.com. That's SHI.com. SHI, innovative solutions, world-class support. This is the Rutgers Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. To protect his home and family from disaster, Steve used courage, wisdom, and his camera phone. That should do it. Way to go, Steve. By simply taking digital pictures of his family's important documents, Steve can always have them stored safely online, no matter when disaster strikes. Learn other simple ways to protect your home and family before a natural disaster at ready.gov. That's ready.gov. A message from FEMA and the Ad Council. Hey, it's me, your cell phone. We need to talk about something, something serious. I know you love me. I know you like using me wherever you are, but I feel like this isn't working out when you're driving. I know you may think that it's possible to focus both on me and the road, but I just don't feel the same way. I think we should spend time away from each other when you're driving. It's for the best. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. SHI helps companies select, deploy, and manage cutting-edge technology. Find out how by visiting SHI.com. SHI Innovative Solutions, world-class support. We are back at the Rutgers Club on the Livingston campus of Rutgers University. For more information on membership and uh, coming by, uh, by all means, check it out at rutgersclub.rutgers.edu. That's rutgersclub.rutgers.edu. I want to talk a little bit more about this past week. One or two more thoughts here on uh, Johnny's performance. just how well he has handled things mentally here. I mean, you talked about we're able to keep a lot of the negativity on the outside, but listen, there were some ugly numbers in the first couple of weeks, and he certainly heard about it, I'm sure, but to be able to go out there and play like he did, I mean, it's the life of a quarterback, you know, you, you're, one day you're everybody's best friend, and the next day, you know, they're beating up on you. Uh, no doubt, and that, that's a big part of, you know, the, the step to college, like, they're still kids. I mean, they, you know, he's 19 yeah. years old or whatever, you know, and and they all go through it. I mean, I think I mentioned last week, you know, Trevor Lawrence, the guy's like unreal and, you know, all you hear is like, turns the ball over. Like, what are you, nuts? Like, I mean, who, who wouldn't kill to have that guy? But um, the, the thing is, you know, I just think it was so impressive that whatever he was hearing and whatever he was probably feeling from, you know, one, you know, just being honest about his performance and two, you know, the, the criticism and to be able to just block it out and compete you know, one, it shows a great testament to his mental toughness. And two, I think it, it is really tied into what we've been talking about the whole time about the team is that, you know, there are a bunch of good young players that are learning along the way. And if they keep building every rep counts, every snap counts, every, whether it's a game or practice, eventually it starts to click. And it, it doesn't happen overnight. It actually takes a long time to become an elite player at, you know, at this level. So he – you know, obviously he's still part of that process, and so is every guy on the team, clearly. You know, so I think that that's the thing that I was most proud of, though, that he had the ability to be mentally tough enough to block all the nonsense out and just focus on his team and going out and performing and getting better. And he kind of, you know, made a commitment to himself that, you know what, I'm going to go back to just playing the way I play and just be a great football player rather than try to be a perfect quarterback. And, you know, and the results were obviously much better. And, you know, hopefully there's something there to build on. But, you know, that to me, that's just – that's the whole – if you want to be great at that position, you better have the toughness to handle the criticism that comes with the tough days, and he definitely has that. Well, speaking of things starting to click, can you take us through that in the red zone play on that touchdown to Eddie Lewis? It looked like they were, I guess, lined up into three sets, at, uh, three wide receivers to the left, and Eddie was the inside most receiver, and they were playing man-to-man coverage, it looked like. And they were able to run that route, but Johnny found him in the back corner of the end zone with a perfect pass to him. Can you talk? I guess walk us through that play and how it happened and what he saw. Well, one, I mean, that's about spot on uh, is exactly what happened. So, I mean, you just walked us through it. But, uh, you know, he did. He, he recognized the coverage. He, he recognized the matchup. Uh, and he made a great throw. And Eddie ran a great route and made a great catch. So, it really was, you know, one, their film study, their preparation. And then as soon as 
uh, they saw it, they were able to go out and execute it. So, you know, that's what you want. You want to see practice come to life in the game, and, and that's, uh, that's what they did. So, was that a linebacker on him, or, or was it a safety? It was the safety on him, but, okay. you know, either way, I mean, you kind of think that's, that's a tough matchup. I mean, the guy's got no help, and he's got the whole field. You know, he, the ball was basically dead in the middle of the field, so he could have went anywhere, and he won on the corner route. It was pretty good. Uh, on, the, on the other side of the ball, I think one performance that really stood out is uh, what Damon Hayes did against Antonio Gandy-Golden. Um, who was just one of the top receivers in the country, and we've, we've seen the numbers this year, had nearly uh, had 877, I think, going into last week, and had five catches, 60-some yards, and the touchdown. And I think on the touchdown, first of all, he made an unbelievable one-handed catch, and secondly, it might have been one of the few plays that Damon was not on him during the game. Damon did a phenomenal job on, job on him. I mean, obviously, he's one of the more talented players in the country, and – that was probably a, a major factor in the game. Uh, we were able to get Damon matched up on him for the rest of the game, you know, from the, pretty much the second quarter, late, late second quarter on, and it definitely changed the game uh, because it basically allowed us to almost play 10 on 10 and let those guys just go out and compete. And, you know, Damon kind of, in a lot of ways, uh, was able to, you know, for the most part, shut him down. And, you know, that's the type of talented athlete that he is. He's really impressed with his preparation, his work ethic, the way he handles his business every day. Uh, he has a really bright future in football. I mean, he, he he comes to work every day, no matter what the situation is. He wants to play against the best players. He wants to compete. He wants to get those matchups. And when he did, it, it made a huge impact on the game. So I think that's a spot on, uh, you know, observation. And about the defensive line, when you looked at the film, how did you grade them out? I know at one point, they did have a party in the backfield where all three of them got home for a sack, but how did you grade them out after you saw them fall? Well, I think they played really well. It was kind of like I was saying. Once we were able to get Damon matched up, all of a sudden we were able to get ahead of the chains a little bit and let those guys go get after the quarterback. And, you know, if we can keep teams out of third and three or four, it's a lot harder to get sacks when, the ball, when they're able to get the ball out right away and they're able to keep those RPOs alive and some of that stuff. So I think we got to see what those guys can do if we can stay ahead of the chains and we can get guys in, in third and long. And, you know, I think if we clean up some of the penalties and stuff, then we really have a chance to do some great things these next couple of weeks. Telephone number 877-384-1869, 877-384-1869. We will also uh, give you a chance to get in. If you're here at the Rutgers Club, by all means, come on up front and get your question in for Coach Campanelli as Rutgers gets ready for Illinois this week. So this juncture of the season, here we are, we're about two-thirds through. You've got four games left. Um, this is, at least it would strike me, one of those times where you've gone through training camp, you've gone through two-thirds of the season, you've got to have a lot of guys who are just nicked up, banged up, but not to the point where they can't play. But they, this is really kind of the, the gritty time of year where you have to play through a lot of those nicks that you take during the course of the year. This is probably the most critical week that we have left from that standpoint because next week we get a bye, so they get an opportunity to rest a little bit. And this bye will be different than the last one. The, the last bye they rested, obviously, but there's also a lot of preparation because it was so early in the season and everybody's pretty fresh. So this, you know, this week is critical for everybody to make sure they're taking care of their bodies. Kenny Parker does an unbelievable job uh, in the weight room of making sure that you're doing all the little things to stay healthy. Our training staff does an unbelievable job, you know, staying ahead of everything and making sure that guys, you know, take care of their bodies. And really, we've been very fortunate, thank goodness, for, you know, we, we have not had a ton of major injuries. And, you know, that's a testament to, one, the players doing little things right, and two, you know, Kenny and the training staff really doing a great job. So this is a big week. If we get through this week pretty healthy, then we have a chance to kind of rest up and really get guys healthy and really get some of those young guys a lot of work and get them prepared to maybe play a little bit in those last three weeks and get some experience. So uh, it, it is – you know, probably the most critical week that way of keeping them fresh. I'm actually interested in hearing about how do some of those meetings go before, you know, as being with a position, you never really had to deal with the training staff. Now you got to learn about each one of your guys and which going to go and how to make the decisions on how much playing time that is. How, how do those meetings go now with the trainers? Uh, believe it or not, we do it as a full staff. So, oh, you? yeah, okay, we, okay. you know, so everybody's in the loop pretty much about, you know, the, the health of the team because it really ties into almost everybody's involved in special teams. Mm -hmm. So especially now with the the four-game redshirt stuff, so you're allowed to play these freshmen, but you don't want to waste their years. So you're, you know, kind of constantly staying on top of everybody's health. But the one thing that that does provide is you don't have to beat everybody up all the time. You can preserve 
some of those reps because you're allowed to play those guys in four games. So there's a lot of benefit to that too. So, you know, but that is, you know, it's almost like calculus every week trying to figure out who can play, who can't play, who can, you know, so. Well, with that in mind, how will you make the determination for some of the younger guys here uh, after this week, let's say in particular, where you'll want to get them a, a chance to get out on the field? What tells you whether or not a guy is ready to get some game action? Well, one practice, you know, obviously, yeah. you know, how they perform in practice is critical. And that's one of the great things about that bye week. It gives you a chance to really give guys work with where they get good on good work, where it's not scout work. And, and that, you know, you kind of see how they fit in with the ones and twos. And, you know, hopefully, you know, some guys have emerged just because they've had opportunities because of injuries. Some guys have done a great job on scout team, like Christian Dremel's a freshman uh, that's really doing a great job for us. And, you know, he got in the Minnesota game a little bit, and you know, he'll probably end up uh, in this game as a slot receiver. Uh, you know, but, and really it was like the defensive players were like, hey, coach, this guy is phenomenal. We got to get him. You know, we got to start getting him some reps. And, Every time I've seen him yeah. in practice, he's catching the football. He doesn't drop the ball because he's always catching the football. I mean, it's he's always open and he's always catching the ball. So you got to put a little weight on him. I think he's about 130 pounds, but <laughs> but he's tough. You know, he's tough for sure. But I, I think that 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 bye week will be great opportunity to get guys real reps and see. You know, how will they do? I mean, obviously, you know, there's three heavyweights uh, on the other end of the you know, the, yeah. the bye week. So it's not like we could just throw them out there. I mean, you know, we, we got to make sure that they're prepared to do it. But at least you can use them in special teams and spots. Uh, but you can't also wholesale do that because, you know, they, there's too many good players out there. If, if, you know, if you had, you know, nine or ten young guys out there, they, the ball would be flying up the field. And we, you know, we obviously can't afford that. All right, we've got a question from a gentleman in attendance here at the Rutgers Club. Kurt, sir, what's your name? Where are you from? Hi, I'm, I'm Reich Sadam. I'm a farmer from Somerset County just across the river. Coach, congratulations on a great win. Thank you. Uh, a lot of people don't know who Liberty is. They are a great growing program. I didn't go there. I read a little bit. But Liberty's doing great things. But you did a great job, and, and so, so did the team in, in, in a victory. Thank you. As a season ticket holder, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm a little late getting here tonight. So if you covered this, I apologize. But Illinois is, is right in the middle. What's keeping you up at night? Uh, with Illinois? Well, uh, on defense, uh, they swarm to the ball. They create turnovers. Uh, they're one of the top teams in the country in creating turnovers, especially fumbles. They really attack the football. Uh, and they seem to be, you know, finding their identity, uh, really in all three phases. Uh, they seem to be finding their identity, and they struggled a little in the middle. And then uh, they seem to get pretty healthy against Wisconsin, and then they played really well against the, – the game last week was like in a torrential downpour, so there wasn't a whole lot of offense on either side. But, you know, they turned guys over for touchdowns and set up touchdowns. So those are big things because over the course of the year uh, and really the last two years, turnovers have been an issue for us. So we have to make sure that we protect the football. When they're on offense, uh, they're a little different than they were last year. They, have, they still have a great running game, and they, they're involved in the RPO stuff, just a little different style of quarterback. And he's a good player. He's a transfer from Michigan. He does a good job. He's, you know, he, he really runs their offense well. So, you know, the big thing for us is, you know, winning first and second down, I think, gives us a chance to put him in a position where they're not putting us in conflict every time that they are, you know, spread out and kind of reading defenders. And you know, the, some of the stuff that Minnesota did, and, you know, everybody's doing it now. But that seems to be like a, maybe a good comparison offensively. They're similar to – to those guys and to Minnesota. And they do a really good job of it, uh, and they have some good backs. So, you know, those are the things that will probably keep you up at night. Okay. Well, without giving away your game plan, oh. I know you'll write that on Friday. Yeah. What do you th – because nobody out there is listening in Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is our strength going up against them? Uh, good question. You know, I, I really think that our, our biggest thing is – we have to find a way to make some big plays. You know, we, we have, like we talked earlier about driving the ball, and that's great, but it's not the easiest thing to do to do that five, six, seven times in a game. So, you know, if we can find a touchdown on special teams, I think it would be key because we've been close. Last week we caused, I thought, two fumbles. We got one of them. Uh, you know, we've had a couple of real good kick returns lately. You know, so I think that that would be big, and we really have to get some turnovers. I mean, it, those are things that maybe – Maybe it's not more so like, hey, that's our strength. It's more like in order for us to win Big Ten football games, we have to do those things. We need to create some explosive plays on offense. We need to get turnovers on defense. And we need to create extra possessions in special teams or get points, you know, one or the other. It's a block kick. It's a punt return, whatever it is. 
Great. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Thank you very much. To your point, I was going through some of the numbers today, and there, with the fumbles in particular, they have forced and recovered 13 fumbles this season. One player, their, middle, or their weak side linebacker, Jake Hansen, has seven forced fumbles this year. That's uh, the most by a Big Ten player since 2011 in just a season, and they still have a few games left, so they are very good uh, at that and they are a plus nine on the year. So certainly one of those things you would be uh, very aware of uh, this coming Saturday. All right, we're going to give you a little bit of a break. We've got Rashawn Battle here, who had a big sack the other day for the Scarlet Knights. He is going to join us here momentarily on the Rutgers Football Radio Show. From Learfield IMG College, live from the Rutgers Club, this is Rutgers Football. Managing your health care can sometimes feel overwhelming. With the new Horizon Blue app from Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, you get the care and support you want right in your hands. Now you can have all of your health care coverage details and access to support at your fingertips. Get help scheduling appointments. Find doctors and specialists. Access your coverage details. Get updates on your claims. See easy-to-understand cost details and get support straight from the experts at Horizon. You can even see a doctor wherever it's most convenient for you via your smartphone or tablet. Downloading the app is easy and free. Text GETAPP to 422-271 today or find it in the App Store or Google Play. There is no charge to download the Horizon Blue app, but rates from your wireless provider may apply. The Horizon Blue app. It's not just an app. It's your direct connection to care. This is the Rutgers Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Today, millions of people all across America are building a life in recovery from addiction and mental illness, helping themselves and helping each other with friends, family and community lending their strength and support. Join the voices for recovery. Together, we are stronger. For 24-hour free and confidential information and treatment referral for mental and substance use disorders for you or someone you know. Call 1-800-662-HELP. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Wake up and text. Text and eat. Mm -mm. Text and meet up with a friend you haven't seen in forever. Hi. Oh, hey. Text and complain that they're on their phone the whole time. (sighs) Text and listen to them complain that you're on your phone the whole time. Uh. Text and whatever. But when you get behind the wheel, give your phone to a passenger. Put it in the glove box. Just don't text and drive. Visit StopTextsStopRex.org. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. SHI helps companies find or helps companies select, deploy, and manage cutting edge technology. Find out how by visiting SHI.com, SHI Innovative Solutions World Class Support. He is from Wallen Paul Pack High School, and last week a big, big sack for the Scarlet Knights. He is linebacker Rashawn Battle, who joins us uh, this week here on the Rutgers Football Radio Show. Rashawn, how you doing, man? Yeah, how you doing? Good. Speak right into the mic there, get right up front there. I'm sorry, I apologize. No, that's no, okay. Yeah. Um, first of all, take us through that sack. It's your second of the season this past week, uh, and the blitz you came on it, it, as it looked, uh, the way it unfolded. Well, um, before the play, uh, my coach he came up to the huddle, and it was uh, I think it was a timeout at the time, and he was saying um, he's thinking about running uh, the blitz, and um, so I was like, Coach, we got to run it, we got to run it. And then as he's walking off, he said, like, I hold up, I'm gonna give you guys the play once you guys get out on the field. So we get out on the field, and I'm looking, I'm just staring him in his eyes, I'm like. Come on, like, come on, coach, you gotta call the call. <laughs> and so then he, he calls the call, so I'm, I'm, I'm souped up, I'm hyped, and I try to like disguise it a little bit. But now, um, once the play started, you know, and it happened so quick, and I just ran through my gap and made a play. It sounds like you're very confident already in the defense. Mm-hmm. What's it been like being able to develop, you know, learn into the Big Ten um, games that you gotta play, and then develop it into the player that you become? Because the past two weeks, man, you should really start starting to step up there and we're coming into your role. So. What's it been like developing in this program and, and how you've been able to be able to become a like a young star team, a rising star? Um, it's been great. Um, like, like I said, I, I've been here for a while now, so um, playing in a couple games, 
I'm, I'm just really starting to get the experience and you know, being on the field. You know, the first time you're out there, like when I was a redshirt freshman, the first time I was out there, everything moved really fast for me. But now, um, over time, it's just like the, I'm starting like the game's starting to become slow to me, and everything's slow paced. So that's it to me. Well, this defense in particular, how hard is it to uh, work in this defense as a linebacker? How long does it take you to really feel comfortable in it? Oh, well, Coach Boo, he, he makes us feel real comfortable, like, real fast. He doesn't make it complicated for us at all, to be honest. Um, it's actually not that uh, complicated for us. So he tries his, best, his hardest, you know, to make it as simple as possible for us so we can be able to play fast and physical. And what I would say, what's your best attribute? Do you like to rush the passer? Do you like to read the uh, run block? Or do you like to drop back into coverage? What's um, your favorite thing to do on the defensive side? That's a great question. My favorite thing to do, I would say, when I was in high school, I was like an outside linebacker. So I used to like rush the passer a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I like really doing anything. I like playing inside. I like playing outside. So as long as I can get like, to the play, throw me wherever you want, I'll play it. You know, it seems like at linebacker, we're talking with Rashawn Battle, Rutgers linebacker, it's one of those things where you're almost going eye to eye with the offense right before the snap, and you're trying to match them uh, and see, figure out what they're thinking about and what might be coming your way. Talk to us about the mental aspect of that from your perspective. Uh, it's great because, you know, being a middle linebacker, you kind of, like you said, you see everything. So I'm always kind of like, my coach always tells us to keep our eyes focused on the old lineman. So sometimes, like, I'm just staring at that guard or that tackle that's in front of me because sometimes they can give the play away. Or if there's that, that yo tight end, if he's out a little further, the play's probably going outside. If he's inside a little bit more, the play's probably going the other way. So I'm really just focused on, like, my keys in front of me, you know, and that's it. Uh, what are some of the guys that have helped you and mentored you to become one of the leaders on the team? Um, some of the guys that helped me, I would definitely say the guys last year, like uh, Deontay Roberts, Trevor Morris, because they were, they were great guys, great leaders. And um, this year, I, I give really give like a lot of my like a lot of my respect to my coach, Coach Boo, because when he came here, um, you know, like he was he, he kind of was open to us from the jump. It wasn't you know anything weird because you know like an old linebackers coach he had moved on, so it was like he didn't make it weird for us at all. He just kind of like brought us together. He made us even closer to the family, like all the linebackers, me, Tyshawn, um, O3, Drew Singleton, Tyreek, uh, Dion, uh, everybody. He just makes us all like feel really close. And it's not often that you see six guys mm -hmm. get an awful lot of time at that position in a 4-3. Yeah. And you all get an awful lot of playing time right yeah. now. Yeah. yeah I mean, what is it, how does that speak to your depth and the fact that, you know, guys like Dion have, have really gotten opportunities as yeah. the season has gone along? Um, it's been great, honestly. Um, we all push each other at the end of the day. Um, you know, one makes a mistake. You know, we go up to each other, we tell them what we got to do here. You know, coaches always tell us, you know, watch, your, watch the guy that's in front of you. Whoever's out there at the time who's playing, make sure you're there watching so you can help him out because soon we want to be out the field and be out on the field and, you know, be one to like, help as well. So we just all rooting for each other at the end of the day. Well, yeah, when you, when you as the linebacker position, you have multiple guys who can go in there. When you look at a guy like Tyshawn Fogg, how much do you look to him for the leadership and try to lead by example by watching him as well? He's a, he's a great leader, he, and he's a great guy, honestly. Um, I love Tyshawn. Um, everything he does on the field, off the field. And um, like you said, he's a captain for a reason on his team. You know, we asked Coach about it earlier. What was it like in that locker room after the game the other day? <laughs> it was great. It was real great. Um, we, had a, we had a good time. Um, it was a, like, it was that, I love that feeling of you know, going back inside the locker room, knowing that you just got a dub, knowing you just won a game. So it, it, was, it was amazing, honestly, real amazing. We celebrated. Well, describe some of your emotions when you're out there on the football field. Are you a loud and round guy, or are you just out there, you go and do your job? What type of player do you Does all that energy come out when you're out there, or are you kind of guy that lines up and plays the next play? Um, I mean, I'm going to make a big play. I'm going to get a little excited. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm, my celebrations aren't too good, though. So I got to work on that. No? <laughs> <My celebrations laughs> Why not? Too good. I, I don't know. I got. I, I, just, I guess I got to You don't have them. You don't, you're not thinking about them, in other words. You're not, you don't get them in advance planned, ready to go. No, I don't. My teammates tell me I should because I guess my last one sucked. So. <laughs> just, just yell to the crowd, man. Well, I don't want to type that. Now, listen, I know they don't have a lot to do during practice, but we all saw what Cole Murphy and Justin were doing the other day. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, so they're getting all the attention for that. You come up with another sack, you got to come up with something. I know. I, I got you guys next game. <laughs> <laughs> Rashawn Battle with us. Um, you know, moving forward, last quarter of this, or last third of the season starting uh, this week, mm -hmm. um, we all know what lies ahead. But the opportunity here 
coming off of a win and getting a little bit more confidence just based on the idea that things were not going your way and it has not been the easiest of seasons. What did that win do mentally for this team? I feel like it gave us a lot of confidence because we know what we can do. Um, I feel like in the games previously before, we kind of beat ourselves, line up big plays and stuff like that. So um, I feel like this game, it kind of gives us some momentum because we, we know what we can do when we're all on point and we're all cooking at one time. So. Um, we definitely going to, I know this game's in the past, but we're going to use the momentum going into this game this week and, you know, moving forward. Well, I know Chris is going to get into a little bit, but I always ask each, each one of our guests and where they're going to eat and what is your go-to spot? My go-to spot? Mm, I'll, I'll probably say Hanson Griddle. See, see. All right. Hanson. What are you going for? Are you going for a crisp? What are you going for? I like the breakfast crisp a lot. I okay. actually had that a couple nights ago. Um... And I like the wings too, but I had like I had the wings so many times, so I try not to get them as much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, more more appropriately this week though, mm -hmm. what's the right Halloween candy? The right Halloween Ooh. candy. Mm. Come on, pie Snickers. Snickers, Snickers. Yeah. top one. No, actually, no Reese's. Reese's, okay. Reese's, Reese's, Reese's. Yeah. And what is the Halloween candy that if you get it in your bag when you were a kid, you're like, oh, come on, uh, what, are, what are you doing? Pro probably a Milky Way. Really? Yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan at all. Does it have to have nuts? Is that the deal? Or is peanut butter? Or what, what's the deal there? Um, I'm a big fan of peanut butter, so probably, I'll probably say the peanut butter part. Okay. See, I'm not a, I'm not a big, I can eat Reese's. I'm not a big into chocolate candy and mixing it up. I can I have a Hershey's Kisses, but you know me. I'm all about the sugar, like the Smarties and stuff <laughs> like that. I mean, or something sour. I, like, I don't know I'm, why I like sour. I'm not a sour. I don't like sugar or sour. No. No. So I mean, no. So what are you doing when you're not playing football? What are the, you know, in your free time, is it video games? Is it Netflix? Is it, what is it? Um, I would probably say I watch a lot of YouTube because I like, I like learning about people a lot. And mm -hmm. on YouTube, you can find everything. So I like, I like watching documentaries and stuff like that. Um, I don't know, just learning a lot of stuff. What's the last good documentary you watched? Um, probably the Muhammad Ali movie. Okay, the the one with Will Smith or yeah. a different one? The one with well, uh, Will Smith. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Ali. It was a gr tremendous movie. Great movie. Great um, movie. Is it just is it a history thing that you like learning about? What is that? Um, yeah, po I'll probably say history. I like a lot of history because I like to learn, like know what happened before me, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So yeah, I'm a big history guy as well. But I guess who the people that you're hanging out with are off of campus and when, I mean off of when you're out of football and who's your go-to guys and what's the future look like for you and what you want to do after life after football? Um, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, I'm, a, I'm a criminal justice major, mm -hmm. so no, like whatever you know, I can do with that, I would definitely like try to do it after football, but the guys I, uh, that I hang out with, it's basically the guys that I came in with in my class, um, Julius Turner, he's, like my, he's my best friend. Mm -hmm. He's like, like since the like, day, the first day I moved here, me and him became like close friends. Um, Comey Marfro, he's my first roommate. So like uh, we always do like it's usually us and uh, T1 Mason, um, Alan Lamar. So yeah, and I also hang out with other guys on the team as well. But those are the guys who are like who I'm really close to, and I also live with them too. So you gonna have a little fun with T1 and Alan the last couple of weeks when they've been out there in coverage down the sidelines? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They both made good plays. Yeah, T1 should have had a pick the other day. <laughs> but, uh, ne next time you guys, he's gonna get it. <laughs> Well, listen, Rashawn, we appreciate you coming by. Best of luck this week, and uh, pleasure talking to you. Thanks again. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank Rutgers you, linebacker Rashawn Battle with us on the Rutgers Football Radio Show. Coach Nunzio Campanelli will rejoin us in just a moment from Learfield IMG College. You're listening to the Rutgers Football Radio Show. It's after hours. You're stuck at work. You're feeling lousy. There are those times when you need to see a doctor, but you just can't get there. So what do you do? Where do you go? You go to the RWJ Barnabas Health Telemed app and you get to see the doctor right away. Whenever you want, wherever you are, on whatever device you choose. It's that simple and that convenient. No appointment necessary for access to doctors who all meet our high standards. In fact, you can even see physician profiles and read about doctors who fit your needs and match your symptoms. But most importantly, you get a diagnosis when you need it, where you want it, 24-7. Download Telemed from RWJ Barnabas Health at the App Store or visit rwjbh.org slash telemed. Now you can see the doctor, even when you can't go to the doctor. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. 
This is the Rutgers Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. One in three adults has prediabetes. One in three. That means it could be you, your football buddy, your football buddy, or you, your best man, your worst man, you, your dog walker, your cat jogger. While one in three adults has prediabetes, with early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its prediabetes awareness partners. We depend on our drinking water supply daily, but where does that water come from? Your water provider encourages you to get to know your local water source so together we can protect and preserve it. The investments we make as a community to protect our water source now ensure we have a sustainable drinking water supply for the future. Visit drinktap.org to learn more. This message is brought to you by the American Water Works Association and your local water provider. We are back on the Rutgers Football Radio Show. I'll tell you what, we could probably spend uh, all night <laughs> talking about Halloween candy because mm-hmm. that's pretty much our entire conversation during the break. Coach Campanelli rejoins us. Should I bother? What was it when you were a kid? What was the go-to candy? Butterfinger. Butterfinger? Yeah. All right. Butterfinger. Yeah, pretty what, random. Yeah. And what is the one that just get it away? Like you would try to trade one of your brothers and sucker them into something. I don't know, a mound or an almond joy. Yeah. So my grandmother loved them. You know, Milk tubs. <laughs> don't bring coconut. Don't, don't bring coconut near us. They don't want to see it. Anyway, um, you know, as you prepare for Illinois this week, they're, of course, uh, of course coached by Lovey Smith, who is the former NFL coach for both the uh, Buccaneers and took the Bears to the Super Bowl. Uh, you know, the Tampa 2, you mentioned it earlier, the, the cover 2, uh, that's one of his um, – real uh, base defenses, if you will, or one of the things that he's really known for, uh, along with the Kiffins and, of course, Tony Dungy. Uh, if you could, just in layman's terms, kind of explain what that defense is. Well, uh, it, traditional cover two is basically five men underneath with two deep. And Tampa two basically is almost like a combination between cover two and cover three because the mic – will the middle linebacker will basically run through the middle of the field and the safeties will play deep and wide so if you try to send someone through the middle of the field they're going to have the mic track them and basically run like almost hip to hip with them forcing you to at least make a high throw so the safeties can you know rally to the ball so they're basically getting a mix of cover three and cover two so there's an element of three deep to it but there's an element of cover two to it from with the standpoint of you have the the flats are defended, and you know they're basically taking away any like quick game or free access throw. And at the same time, if you try to get four guys down the field, they're going to try to get three down the field to force tough throws and make you throw it over the linebackers and under the safeties. And so you got to be a really good thrower to do it, you know. And, and it, you know, it's why it's so prevalent in the NFL because there's so much passing. You know, hopefully, uh, you know, for them to to be able to be successful at that, though. You know, obviously, you know, running the football is one of the things. That, that's why they play a lot more cover one probably than they used to, uh, you know, just because it probably in college football you don't see as much. With all the spread, it's yeah, much exactly. more difficult you know, to do it. Running quarterbacks and stuff like that. So you want to get more guys in the box. Well, talk about the matchups. I guess when you talk about that middle linebacker running that deep middle run through, sometimes you can get some matchups in that where you can put a little bit of faster guy because it's not easy, especially in the RPO game when you got to also play the to run too. But – a lot of times the linebackers will play that pass first if they know they have to run that deep middle run through. So talk a little bit about the matchups with that. Well, I think that's exactly yeah, that's probably why you see more you know, less of it in college than you do in the NFL because the some of the things that you would do to attack it are probably more prevalent in college than in the NFL. In the NFL a lot of it's gonna be trying to get matchups and work off that Mike linebacker where you know, I, I think in college it's probably more the running quarterback. If that guy's out of there, there's a hole vacated in the middle of the field. So uh, most teams will do it based on down and distance probably. All right, you've been a head coach now uh, in college football for four games. What, if anything, has surprised you about the role or what has – didn't you necessarily realize that you were going to have to dedicate so much time to? Jeez, uh, good question. <laughs> I, you know, I, uh, 
I don't know. I mean, I, I would just say that I guess, you know, the time isn't like a big shock. I mean, that, that I kind right. of expected, uh, you know, that you have that as an assistant. You're yeah, it's just, it's just spending it on different things. It right. just, you know, you get spread pretty thin, I guess, when you're, you know, it's hard to be an expert at anything when you're doing a million things. So, you know, learning to balance the time out. So I think that the combination of being, you know, the head coach and the offensive coordinator is very difficult. You know, I mean, I, and I've always known that, like, you know, even in the event that if I ever were had the opportunity to be a full-time head coach, I would definitely have an offensive coordinator because there's no way that you can do all the things you need to do for the team and do all that work. You know, and there are a lot of guys, that, you know, the Sean Paytons of the world that call the offense, but they have an offensive coordinator because you have to. I mean, there's just no way to, to handle that. So I would say that's probably the biggest thing where, you know, in my previous job, I could do all those jobs and as many hours as that was, it's just different, you know, so it, it, that's definitely, and a lot of it is because also we, we were kind of installing so much stuff over the last five weeks that, you know, that made it even more difficult because usually that stuff is done in the spring and the summer. So, you know, we were kind of doing it on game week, which makes it hard. And how does the off the field operations go? Like when it comes to, I know doing everything when it comes to meeting and on the field, but now having to meet with guys like William Gilkerson and making sure the hotels are right and the arrangements, uh, do you put all your trust in them or how do, how do the meetings go when you meet with the operations? Well, I mean, Will is a true pro, so, I mean, he's got this thing running. Uh, you know, he's kind of <laughs> like really the head coach, I think. But, uh, you know, but really, he, you know, he does a great job. And it, a lot of that stuff has been done. So, like, you know, there might be slight changes where you say, hey, I, I prefer to do it this way. And th there are su subtle, easy changes. But, again, most of that stuff's done in the preseason. So if you – or the off season, So, you know, we've kept a lot of things pretty much status quo and – one, because guys like Will and Ryan, they're true professionals. They do a great job, and they, you know, they basically can almost walk in and say, hey, all right, this is what you need to do when it comes to this. And that, that's been very helpful. I mean, obviously, he's been here for a long time, and he's a, you know, a true Rutgers guy. So, um, but I think that uh, those things are, you know, they're time-consuming. But honestly, I think they're things that are done in the offseason. They shouldn't really be getting done now. All right, we'll take our final timeout. More to discuss with the Illinois matchup this coming Saturday. Again, this is our final Rutgers football radio show of the season because of some basketball conflicts in the bye week next week. Uh, we will, on the 12th of November, have a Rutgers wrestling preview show with head coach Scott Goodell here at the Rutgers Club. Also want to say congratulations to the women's soccer team. The Big Ten bracket was announced today. They will play Indiana Sunday at 12 noon at Yersack Field. The semifinals and the finals are also at Yersack, so we're looking for a huge hometown crowd. Again, that's Sunday at 12 noon. They had a terrific year, finished 14-2-2 overall, 8-2-1 in the conference, uh, tied for the most regular season wins and conference wins in program history, and it is the second straight year that they were the regular season conference title runner-up. They are 16th in the country right now as Mike O'Neill continues to do a great job with the women's soccer program. So again, Sunday, 12 noon, they face Indiana in the Big Ten tournament at your sack field. Come on out and support the Scarlet Knights. All right, we'll take a break. You're listening to the Rutgers Football Radio Show from Learfield IMG College. Your bank records are secure. Your first grader can write code. Your package is being delivered, and your driver is one minute away. As technology enhances our everyday lives, SHI International ensures the schools and businesses developing new technologies have the tools and expertise they need to compete and win in the ever-changing global marketplace. Find out how SHI supports the business and technical needs of more than 20,000 of the world's most complex IT organizations by visiting SHI.com. That's SHI.com. SHI, innovative solutions, world-class support. Cold? Cough? Flu symptoms? Sounds like you should see a doctor. So where do you go? You go to the RWJ Barnabas Health Telemed app and you get to see the doctor right away, whenever you want, on whatever device you choose. It's that simple and that convenient. No appointment necessary. Download Telemed from RWJ Barnabas Health at the App Store or visit rwjbh.org slash telemed. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. This is the Rutgers Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Millions plan for retirement online, estimate your future benefits, apply for retirement, and manage your benefits all from the comfort of your home. 
and give yourself the freedom to do what you want offline. Social Security's online services help put you in control with secure access to your information anytime, anywhere, allowing you to spend more time with family, friends, or simply just enjoying the day. Social Security, securing today and tomorrow. See what you can do online at socialsecurity.gov. Produced at U.S. taxpayer expense. Hi, it's Olivia Munn with my shelter pets, Frankie and Chance. Say hi, guys. <coughs> When I adopted them, I discovered that they both have incredible personalities. Chance's sole purpose in life is to love and to be loved. Frankie is a little bit of a scoundrel and always entertaining. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Adopt pure love at theshelterpetproject.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council, the Humane Society of the United States, and Maddie's Fund. Back at the Rutgers Club on the Livingston campus here at the Rutgers Football Radio Show. You know, we've got to thank our friends here at the Rutgers Club, Sebastian, uh, Mr. Emmanuel, everybody who has done a phenomenal job for us uh, all season long at the show. And it has been an absolute blast to do it here. As we said, we'll have a wrestling preview show here coming up on November the 12th. All right, so you've got Illinois this week. Uh, road game, uh, your second road game here as a head coach First of all, everybody loves to play at home, but do you like that mentality of taking a group on the road and this is, we, we can just kind of bond and, and, you know, focus on the task at hand, so to speak. There are no outside distractions. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's great. I mean, you get, you get an opportunity to just be with the team and you're with them for, you know, whatever day and a half and it's a, a, just a great opportunity to focus and, you know, just basically stay locked in on one thing. And Coach, give us some keys real quick before we head out. You know, they're, they're kind of consistent with what they've been. You know, on, on offense, we have to uh, – we've got to protect the football, we've got to stay on schedule, and we've got to make some big plays. And the ball's got to finish in the end zone. You know, we, we can't settle for a lot of field goals. And then on defense, uh, you know, we've got to limit the big plays. Uh, we've got to create turnovers, and we've got to get to the quarterback. I think if we do those things, we're in good shape. And then, you know, on special teams, we're always talking about creating, you know, an, one extra possession a game, whether it's a block kick, a force fumble, something like that. We do that and get an explosive play. I think we'll be in, in good shape. And that's one thing we didn't mention from the other day, but the consistency of your special teams has been very good. Not just the specialists, those uh, the, uh, the guys like Larry Stevens, who forced that fumble with a jarring hit the other day. Yeah, he's great. I mean, he's, he's been that way since he was in high school. I've, I've been watching him play for a long time, and he, he is – he just loves football. He plays so hard. He's such a tough kid, and he, he's so unselfish. You know, he'll do anything to try and help the team win. Well, Coach, listen, good luck this week against Illinois. you got the bye week next week, and we appreciate your generosity of time uh, all season long since you were put into the job, and you've been terrific with us. We appreciate that very much. Thanks, guys. It's been a lot of fun. Well, Absolutely. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. All right. I want to remind you, coming up on November the 6th, one week from today, You've got the 150th anniversary of college football, and it will be celebrated as it has been all year long right here at the birthplace of college football with some big events, and we want you to be part of them. The ringing of the bells at Old Queens, that will be 2 o'clock on November the 6th. It's open to the public. By all means, come down. And then later on, the unveiling of the birthplace of college football sign at 3.30. That will be at the College Avenue Gym. And that, of course, is right the spot where the first ever college football game was played in 1869 on November the 6th against Princeton. I want to thank Colin Osborne. has done a phenomenal job with his staff all season long with us on our vision. Our producer and engineer here on site always does a great job. He is Paul Schrager. And back in our Rutgers IMG uh, Sports Network Studios, Learfield IMG Sports Network Studios, John Essek as well. Again, thanks to everybody here at the Rutgers Club for helping us out all year long. We will see you on November the 12th for the preview of Rutgers Wrestling Season with Scott Goodell, and we will see you Saturday. It is a 3.30 kick Eastern time as Rutgers visits Illinois and the Scarlet Knights looking for their first Big Ten win of the year. Have a great week, everybody. for listening to the Rutgers Football Show. Join us throughout the season from the Rutgers Club to talk Scarlet Knights football. Tonight's show has been brought to you by...
The preceding has been a Learfield IMG College presentation of the Rutgers Sports Network.